Now, Abdel Basad Al Megrahi, the man convicted of bombing Pan Am Flight 103 out of the skies over Lockerbie, returned to Libya a free man last week. The Scottish government released the terminally ill terrorist, saying the decision was based purely on compassionate grounds. But the United States believes that other motives were involved. Well, let's now cross to our Washington studio and Aliona Minkowski to find out more. Aliona, over to you. Thanks, Alice. Well, that's right. This story could be based on a little more than just compassion. It could be based on some very lucrative financial deals that were cut between the Libyan government and British Prime Minister Gordon Brown, as well as some other high-level officials. It could also be an attempt by the British government to save face. Allegedly, some evidence was about to come out that would have proven that the Lockerbie bomber was innocent all along. So as the story gets more complicated, we really have to wonder how much of these allegations are true or could they be coming out of some negative emotional response here in the U.S. too? Now here to discuss it with me is RT contributor Wayne Madsen. Wayne, thanks for joining me today. So first, can you tell me where does the evidence come from that would say that this was based on a financial deal? Well, my sources uh, that are very close to the British government uh, are telling me that uh, a year ago negotiations began between uh, Colonel Gaddafi's uh, government and the British government to help bail out two large, the largest Scottish banks, Halifax Bank of Scotland and the Royal Bank of Scotland, which assumed some toxic assets. They had uh, loans that uh, uh, turned out to be very bad loans. The deal was basically, to sum it up, uh, bail out for McGrath, the Libyan uh, convicted uh, bomber, accused bomber of the Pan Am 103. So two weeks prior to McGrath's release, a, uh, a meeting between Saif Fel Qaddafi, Colonel Qaddafi's son, and Peter Mandelson, the British business secretary, in a Rothschild-owned estate on the island of Corfu. That's apparently where the deal was consummated. Uh, they decided to release McGrath on uh, compassionate grounds because he's said to be suffering from prostate cancer. Recent reports from Tripoli now are saying that maybe his cancer isn't that far advanced, that he has plans to write a tell-all book about uh, his experiences. Now, do we have any, any idea how much money we're actually talking about that it would cost well, to bail out these banks? Well, we're talking about billions of dollars. These uh, banks, uh, very similar to the bailout of banks here in the United States, Basically, these banks were bailed out by British uh, f uh, government funds, public funds, instead of private funds. And uh, if uh, this bailout had not uh, occurred, uh, the British government would, and the British taxpayers would have been uh, left holding the bag, in addition to the Scottish government, uh, which is now run by the Scottish National Party, that has intentions to uh, declare independence eventually from Great Britain. But is it only the banks, or is there someone else that stands to benefit and uh, make a buck here? Well, obviously, uh, this is very lucrative for the uh, Labor Party. They uh, get out from under these, uh, these, uh, this bailout of these Scottish banks. Uh, but there's enough blame to go along. We see kind of an argument now, the Labor Party trying to score points against the Scottish National government in, 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 that rules Scotland. Uh, however, I'm told that Alexander Salmon, the first minister of Scotland with the Scottish National Party, is a very good friend of Gordon Brown. He used to be the uh, person who worked for the Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, one of the bailed out banks, and was in charge of negotiating the oil uh, deals between the government of Britain and the uh, North Sea uh, oil companies uh, that uh, operate these oil rigs. So he, these two individuals are very, very much involved in this uh, uh, this negotiation to cut this deal. Well, thanks for joining us, Wayne, and we'll continue to cover this story as it continues to get more and more complicated, it seems. Back to you, Alice. Eliana Mankowski and Wade Radcliffe, thank you very much for those thoughts over there in Washington.